All right, let's look at our list of arteries below or posterior to the diaphragm. We've already covered the veins that were posterior or below the diaphragm. Let's start with the abdominal aorta. Remember that above the diaphragm, it was called the thoracic aorta and below it's the abdominal aorta. Could you call it descending? Sure. All right, but to be more specific, we're below the diaphragm, so let's call it abdominal aorta or posterior to the diaphragm of the pig. The first branch that you'll see off of the abdominal aorta is the celiac trunk. Celiac trunk. There's that word trunk again that should tell you that there's going to be branches off of this trunk that we need. The three branches that we need are related to the three organs that you're going to see directly underneath the diaphragm. That's going to be the liver furthest to the right, the stomach, in the closer to the left, but kind of in the midline and then closer to the left. And then furthest to the left, you'll see the spleen. So the three branches we're going to want to know off the celiac trunk are the spleen branch, the stomach branch, and the liver branch, also called the splenic artery, the gastric artery, and the hepatic artery. You must know the branches that come off of the celiac trunk. You will not have to identify these by sight this time, but you will have to identify the celiac trunk and know the three branches uh, and the organs associated with those branches. The next um, artery we'll see off of the abdominal aorta is the anterior mesenteric artery or mesenteric. It, this goes to the small intestines and the most of the large intestines or the first part of the large intestine. We could think about it as this is the part, do you remember that the mesentery or the mesentery was the clear kind of the, the clear membrane around the small intestines that had those uh, arcades, those red arteries going to them. And so this anterior mesenteric artery is where those little tiny arteries that were inside that clear membrane came from. Okay? So the anterior mesenteric artery will be the uh, first part of the, uh, we'll, get, we'll get the small intestines taken care of and then the first part of the large intestines. Later we'll cover the last part of the large intestine. The next, the next organ we'll see is the kidney. And so the kidney has a renal artery and a renal vein running to it. Here's the renal artery. Then we'll see a gonadal artery. You may call it gonadal, but if you want to be more specific, in the female, the artery going to the ovary is called the ovarian artery. And in the male, the artery going to the testicles is called the testicular artery. The next one we'll see is the posterior mesenteric artery. Remember the anterior took care of the small intestines and the first part of the large intestine. The last part of the large intestine is called the descending colon. And so this posterior mesenteric artery takes care of that. It's very close to uh, this, what you're gonna see the iliolumbar and this uh, split where the umbilical and the iliacs occur. So. Look for the posterior mesenteric closer to uh, the split of the iliac, iliac arteries, okay? And where the umbilicals are. So let's look at the next one we'll see after the posterior mesenteric is the iliolumbar. Same as the iliolumbar vein, this iliolumbar artery runs along the iliac crest. So you can look for it in sort of a horizontal fashion. We'll see the umbilical arteries on either side of the uh, urinary bladder, which we've seen those before. And we'll see the external iliac artery leading into the femoral artery. Remember that the iliac region, even as high as the iliolumbar region, this is where we start thinking about the hip because of the iliac bone. And then down at the iliac artery, we're thinking about uh, the inguinal region that's the easiest way to identify it, analogous to the axillary region um, as the arm is connected to the torso at the axillary region, so the leg is connected to the torso at the iliac region. So the external iliac artery is in that inguinal region, and that turns into the femoral artery. You'll notice on this list that different from the veins, there's no common iliac artery. Let's look at the picture. Okay, 
So let's start up here at our diaphragm again. That's our marker that we're going to begin with when we're thinking about terms. There's the heart a little bit to the left of the midline. And here's our abdominal aorta coming off and running down a little bit uh, to the left because that is why, I'm sorry, that is where it's coming from, the left ventricle of the heart. So it's slightly to the left of the midline and then the um, vena cava will be on the right. So let's look down the abdominal aorta. Our first thing to note is the celiac trunk. Here it is, the celiac trunk. And remember it had three branches going to the organs they supplied. The organs were the liver, the stomach, and the spleen. And I'm doing that to show you the livers on the right, the stomachs in the middle and just a little bit to the left, and then the spleen would be to the furthest left. So here are the branches. The liver is the hepatic artery, number one. The stomach is the gastric artery, number two. And the spleen is the splenic artery, number three. So those are the three branches coming off of the celiac trunk. Our next branch is the anterior mesenteric artery going to the small intestine and the first part of the large intestine. So the anterior mesic artery, mesenteric artery is just below the celiac trunk. You'll see these as two rather large uh, branches, I'm sorry, rather large uh, arteries compared to the ones a little bit lower. So we've got celiac trunk, anterior mesenteric, we'll come to the kidney and see the renal artery, the renal artery, and of course there's another kidney over here with a renal artery. Then we'll see a gonadal artery. Here in the male, the gonadal artery could be called the testicular artery because it's going to a testicle. In the female, it would be referred to as the ovarian artery. And we'll see the end of that mesenteric artery called the posterior mesenteric artery. We had the anterior up here for the small intestines and first part of the large intestine. Now we need to cover the last part of the large intestine. The descending colon is uh, given oxygen and nutrients by the posterior mesenteric artery. Posterior mesenteric artery. Now we're at the hip bone. So I'm going to put my probe across so you can see this would be the hip bone that went around. And the hip bone's proper name is the, well, the iliac crest would be a good way to describe that. So we're at the junction between the lumbar. Remember that the uh, pig's lumbar is from essentially from, I don't know, just below the diaphragm to here, so it's very long. There's another lumbar artery way up here that we haven't uh, put on this list, actually just above the kidney. So the pig has a long lumbar spine, uh, if you're thinking about an animal with four legs. So once we get to the hip bone, we're still in lumbar, but now we're at the ilia. So we're at the iliac crest. So think iliolumbar is the artery that comes almost straight off uh, meaning horizontally on the, uh, off of the abdominal aorta. Let's go below that and note that our first branch towards the lateral would go to the leg. So this is the external iliac artery. External iliac artery. That turns into the femoral artery and then that will split into its branches. But we go from external iliac to femoral artery. The internal iliac would branch here if we're interested in that, but as n there's no common, no common iliac artery. There is a common iliac vein, so refer back to your other drawing for that. Lastly, let's look at the umbilical arteries. I've just drawn both of them and put bladder in the middle so you'll remember that the umbilical arteries are to either side of the urinary bladder. And, uh, picture of that for you here. Well, all right, so umbilical arteries to either side of the urinary bladder. Do we remember uh, what the urinary bladder looks like in the fetal pig where it uh, sticks up towards the umbilicus? And these are the umbilical arteries that emerge at that umbilicus or emerge from that umbilicus, okay? So there you go, that's enough.